What's going on, Giants fans? Happy Monday. This is my last day as a 32-year-old male. Tomorrow is my birthday. Thank you in advance for the happy birthday wishes. Giants are a mess. There's no question about it. The Giants are a mess. During my downtime at work, I like to scroll through Twitter, Bleacher Report, Facebook, see if any uh, hirings are happening around the league. Um, and with the Giants, see if any news breaks about potential defensive coordinator hirings, um, assistant coach and hirings, and all that good stuff. The more I read about this team and this ownership and this franchise, my blood boils. My blood boils. This team, this organization is so dysfunctional right now. And... I'll start with this. Today, the Giants lost their tight ends coach who left. I forget his name off the top of my head, but it doesn't matter. Um, our tight ends coach left to go join Jim Harbaugh on uh, Los Angeles uh, and join the Chargers. Then, as soon as that was over with, I went on Twitter to see any more news about that happening. And, of course, you got the Giants fans. And I get it. I understandably, I get it. I get their point of view. You got Giants fans uh, on here saying that, man, no one wants to work for Dayball. Uh, man, the Giants are dysfunctional. Man, Dayball must be hated. Everyone wants to just leave the Giants building. And for the matter, it, it could be true. Part of that could actually be true. Um, but also, I see the other side of things. I see coaching, coaching carousels around the league, coaching changes, hirings. The Giants right now, as much as it pains me to say, the Giants are not an attractive destination for up-and-coming coaches, up-and-coming promotions, guys that want to find their, their path in the league, guys that want to make a name for themselves. The Giants right now are not a, an attractive destination for that type of coach, for that type of person, for that type of player. A lot of these guys see the Giants as one mistake away, one bad season away from the entire building being gone, erased, removed, and started over. Um, so it makes sense to ask why these coaches are leaving the Giants. Um, and I'm not just saying coordinators, positional coaches, running backs coach, tight end coach, strength and conditioning coach. Um, they see that this this regime might have maybe one more possible year left to make things right to make a change to make the fucking playoffs again they have one more year to change sh fucking shit that's going on or they know that their ass is going to be run out of town so it makes sense why these guys are leaving for job openings uh to teams that just hired a brand new coach because they know they have at least two to three years to make it they have a two to three year window of job security as opposed to the Giants who, if I'm a new offensive coordinator, if I'm a new D.C. and I'm signing my name on the dotted line and I'm going to be the Giants next defensive coordinator. I know that if this team has a bad year, the head coach could be fired. I could be fired because usually head coaches are out with the whole staff. Um, very rarely does, does a new head coach keep a few uh, coordinators. Um, so it, all, it makes sense. It makes sense as to why the Giants are having such difficulty in hiring a defensive coordinator because there's no firm ground to stand on with this fucking organization. And it starts at the top. It starts with, with our pathetic fucking loser of an owner, John Mara, who since he has promoted his nephew, soon to be future Giants owner, Tim McDonald. Yes, you heard that right. Tim McDonald, the nephew of John Mara, the the son of Wellington's daughter, lone daughter, I believe, he is being groomed to potentially be the future owner of the New York football giants once John Mara has resigned or retired. Um, since they have promoted him to pro player personnel director or whatever in 2011, this team has fucking sucked. I saw a stat earlier in the week, the giants have the worst record out of every fucking nfc team in the fucking conference in the last 10 years the worst record third worst in the entire nfl so i get why coaches aren't itching at the chance jumping at the chance to be a coordinator on this fucking team because the team fucking sucks 
And a lot of that has to do with John Mara, bad hires, bad hires, bad hires, promoting nephews, promoting fucking brothers, promoting fucking cousins to make these personnel decisions. It's maddening. It's fucking maddening, and every time I go on Twitter to read something new about the Giants, I just want to pull my fucking hair out. Um, but the purpose of this video, I'll make it short, um, is Brian Dable the reason why these coaches do not want to come here? Um, before I was defending him, I, I said, look, Wink Martindale, he got fired. Of course, he's going to be a bitter berry. He's going to say some na nasty, negative things about Brian Dayball because those two did not obviously get along this last past season. Um, but Wink Martindale is not on the team right now. He has not been really brought in for interviews for a defensive coordinator position other than maybe the Eagles. Um, so that's one part, but is he a problem? I, I don't know. I, I get this sense that coaches are having difficulty working with him because they're called motherfuckers, motherfuckers, pussies, bitches, what the fuck are you doing, this and that, and I get it, who wants to work around that, but these coaches need to understand that you need to have fucking thicker skin in this game. Bill Parcells would berate and fucking ridicule Bill Belichick all the time on the sidelines, and then I saw a tweet, well... Man, he, uh, Bill Parcells never threw a tablet at Phil Sims. There wasn't fucking tablets back then. There wasn't tablets. Oh, he didn't throw a fucking binder at him. We didn't really have binders back then. Parcells just did this. He had a, like a play sheet for defense, and he just did this. But he fucking cursed and fucking screamed and berated Phil Sims all the time. You can go back to NFL Films, the biography of Bill Parcells. He was a mean, nasty son of a bitch. But guess what? The players respected him, and they played hard for him. Same with these current Giants players. They did not quit. When the going got tough, they didn't fucking quit. They didn't put their head between their legs and fucking cry. They fucking fought each and every week, and they fucking won games and kept this season alive for as long as they possibly could. And we were eliminated from playoff contention in the last couple weeks of the season as opposed to our crosstown rivals, the Jets, who were eliminated back in November. Um... But is Brian Dable the problem? I don't know. Is he hard to work with? Maybe. I'm not on the sidelines. I'm not inside the building. I don't know what's going on. I know the players love and respect him. That's honestly the most important part. Coaches, are they a little sensitive bitches and need to get some thicker skin? Sure. But I do know this team is dysfunctional as fuck. This team is an embarrassment right now. The organization, I am not proud right now to be a Giants fan. It's been a long time since I've been proud. Um, I keep seeing, oh, this is the 16th year anniversary of us winning the Super Bowl against undefeated Patriots. Oh, this is the 10th, 12th anniversary or whatever of us winning the Super Bowl against the Patriots again. Uh, it's all good. I love seeing those memories. Brings back joy that I once had in my life about this team being a fan of the Giants. I am done with the memories. I need to start winning, and I need to start winning now. Let me fucking just, let me be happy with this team. So John Mara... Get this shit, shit fucking right. Fix it fucking fast.